Today, we will be diving into a new topic not covered on this channel previously, and that is ETFs. Specifically, we are trying to determine if a certain space exploration ETF is worth investing in. But first, what is ARKX? Or who is Kathy Wood? And what exactly are ETFs? We will answer all of that and more right now. So in this channel, all we care about are things related to space and investments. ARKX is an intriguing investment vehicle that you should be aware of. Kathy Wood, a well-known fund manager for ARK Invest, created an ETF specifically geared towards space exploration and innovation. According to their website, the advisor defines space exploration as leading, enabling, or benefiting from technologically enabled products and or services that occur beyond the surface of Earth. This definition is broken into four classes, orbital aerospace, suborbital aerospace, enabling technologies, and aerospace beneficiary companies. Now that we have a general understanding of this ETF, let's quickly define what a ETF really is. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. What this means is that an ETF is a type of investment fund that can be traded on the stock market like a typical marketable security. Unlike typical stocks, ETFs don't represent any one company. Rather, they are often represented by a basket of investments such as bonds, stocks, commodities, currencies, and more. In regards to this video, we are interested in aerospace equity ETFs, which represent a pool of stocks within the aerospace domain. However, if you are curious on the exact workings of ETFs, I recommend that you research it. It's actually kind of cool. But let's jump to the story instead. So who is Kathy Wood, and why do we care that she made a space ETF? According to Forbes, she is a star stock picker who founded the $60 billion ARK Invest which is an investment firm that she created in 2014 after Alliance Bernstein, the company she served as chief investment officer, turned down her idea to start an ETF focused on disruptive technologies. Since then, her flagship ETF, ARKK, has outperformed the market by providing over 38% cumulative returns over five years and that was largely driven by holdings in Tesla as well as other disruptive technology companies during bull markets. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a video. Now, Kathy Woods is now eyeing the potential growth in the space industry with her new space exploration ETF with the tanker symbol of ARKX, which opened on the market on March 30th. But since then, it has taken a bumpy ride with a large decline over the last couple months. The ETF currently is sitting at 19% below its opening price. While this isn't surprising with the recent decline in space stocks, let's take a deeper look at what stocks are in the ARKX bucket to understand if it's worth investing in or not. First, read their definition of ARKX to understand what companies they are looking for. When we read it earlier, the phrase beyond the surface of Earth doesn't mean actual definition of space, Rather, it includes anything that flies. We unfortunately have to accept the definition to understand the stocks that they have picked. So we're gonna do something a little different than we normally do on this channel, and we're gonna go free flying here. So what I have is I've pulled down all the data from ARKX to get an idea of what are their holdings currently as of January 21st. And we're gonna look at these and be able to go line by line and figure out does it make sense or where does it not? So a lot of these do make sense. There are a lot of aerospace and defense companies, but there's some in here that leaves me scratching my head. So going at the top here, we have Trimble, which does a lot of work with geospatial, transportation, government. So I can kind of see that. Although I find it interesting how it's such a large weight at nearly 10% of the holding. But okay, let, let, let's just assume because of ties to geospatial software and hardware development, that, that makes sense. This one I thought was interesting that 7.7% .7 of the holding is in another ETF for 3D printing that is also run by ARK Invest. Almost makes me wonder, are, are we double dipping? Then you have things like Kratos, L3 Harris, both of those are multi-domain aerospace and defense, so that's pretty understandable. Iridium Satellite, satellite communication, that makes sense. 
Komatsu does military equipment, forest mining. I can see more indirect ties. So a little confused on that, but I can I can see how it could possibly tie to it. Same thing kind of like with JD Logistics. Again, they have things like uh, shipping, which can use satellite positioning to help figure out where things are in the world. Also, they travel or do transportation by air. So I can kind of see it based on their loose definition of anything beyond the surface of the earth. But to me, it doesn't scream space or space exploration, right? If we go on to things like air environment, okay, again, I can kind of see it with anything beyond the earth. Dassault systems, being a software guy, I understand this because CATIA, SolidWorks, etc. are huge enablers for engineering, design, and development. So I completely understand that one. Here's one I thought was interesting, UiPath. For those of you who do not know, that's robotic process automation. I can see it as being an enabler to help businesses be more efficient. I don't know the exact play regarding space exploration. So I'm unsure on how this one ties fully, but I know a lot of aerospace and defense companies are using tools like RPA to optimize their business. But that seems a bit of a stretch. Then we have Amazon, obviously their project Kuiper, uh, and possible ties to Blue Origin, so I can kind of see that one. Unity Software, for those of you who don't know, their video game software development engine, they're starting to be used everywhere. And I've been to a few modelation, modeling and sim conferences where Unity has been a big player, even for defense. So I actually, this one means a lot to me. I definitely can see that. Blade Air Mobility, Urban Air Mobility, okay, beyond the surface of the earth. According to their definition, I get it but I personally would not have chosen this one. Deere and Co, so think John Deere. Again, they make a lot of heavy equipment. Maybe there's use cases, but I don't really see it as a space exploration. Garmin, I typically think watches. Here we have aviation solutions for helicopters, airplanes, etc. So they may do some, some dabbling in some space technology. So I can kind of see that one. Marked Forge, additive manufacturing, 3D printing kind of, kind of world. I can kind of see that as an enabler. Spirit Aerosystems, according to the Wikipedia, world's largest first tier aerostructures manufacturer, but I think it kind of fits. Elbit Systems kind of fits as well. They do a lot of sa satellite ISR development. Palantir is interesting, being from a background of machine learning, big data analytics, Palantir is actually very much in the aerospace and defense realm. I'm see starting to see them everywhere, so I definitely see this one as a tie. Uh, we have Lockheed Martin multi-domain aerospace and defense company, big one, so that makes sense. You have Google, which of course Google's trying to take over the world, so I can see that one because they do a lot with Google Maps, which I wonder if that's data from Planet Labs, who they were an early investor in. You have things like Teradyne, do a lot of test equipment, etc. You have Archer Aviation, electric, you know, electric VTOL aircraft for vertical takeoff and landing. However, they had been down 68% for the year, which is not so great. Same thing with a few others like Joby Aviation down here, not doing so hot. So even if they fit into this ETF, it's it's not it's not doing so well. Velo 3D, again, a lot of additive manufacturing. Then we have Hi uh, Hiko, Hiko, I don't know how to pronounce it, Honeywell, Thales. They're all kind of in that domain, so that makes sense. Airbus, again, same thing. Minoric, laser communication for air and space. Okay, I can kind of see that. ANSYS, engineering simulation software. There's a lot of simulation helping out the engineering world. I can see that for aerospace as a enabler for sure. Synopsis, I can kind of see that too. Bit of a stretch, more of an enabler. 3D systems, again, enabler. Teledyne, makes sense. Netflix? I don't know if it's like documentaries on space systems, if that counts, but I, I, this one didn't make much sense to me, and especially with the recent drop in value I had a big question mark for that. And then of course, government cash main infusion, which is just a institutional manager of money market strategies. The vibe I'm getting from this is that there's not a whole lot of ties to really deep space, except for when you're talking about the big multi-domains. There's a lot of enablers and things that they feel like they're kind of fitting in there just to make it a fund. But what about the Rocket Labs or the Astros, Spire Global, Redwire? All those companies that went public recently, why aren't they in here? I, I get that the space companies are generally going to be going down in, in recent days because of the market pessimism, but if it's a space exploration ETF, you would think I would, you'd want to see some of those companies in here, but we don't. After reviewing the stocks in the portfolio, let's take a closer look at their performance. 
ARKX has performed poorly with a nearly 19% drop, whereas in the same time period, SPY, which is for the S&P 500, has gone up 11%. Kathy Wood is known for investing heavily into innovation, which often does well during bull markets, such as in the early 2000s. But she also severely underperforms during bearish markets, such as 2008. And this makes sense since speculative stocks rise high in bull markets, but also are the first to drop in bear markets. Right now, the market is starting to show signs of pullback, and the space industry has been hit relatively hard. It's difficult to say whether investing in speculative plays is a good move at this time. Personally, I'm on the fence with the makeup of ARKX. I'm not enticed enough to invest in it at this time. However, I do hope this video has been informative. But for now, that is it for the end of this analysis. I hope you found it valuable. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And this is Seedling Space, signing out.